In this video, we're going to be making a reptile and amphibian conservation area that you can set up in your own back garden. Start off by digging a, a hole where your pond's going to be. So you want it to be deep at one end and then tapered upwards so that the frogs and toads and newts can climb out and climb in freely. You'll then want to even this off so it's level. I've put mud around the edges to make sure that it's all level. You'll now want to add a pond liner to your pond. You can use latex pond liners, which are quite expensive, but you'll get a lot of value out of them. Or you can use a bottom sheet, which I've used, for a tent, which costs around £6. You'll then want to cover the edges with mud, so it's all hidden, and then add your substrates and live plants, and then fill with water. One of my neighbours was selling their house and the buyer wanted to get rid of the pond but wasn't sure whether they were actually going to do it. So I rescued half the frog and toad spawn and left half of them in the pond just in case they decided to just leave the pond be. I wouldn't recommend doing this yourself because you might sabotage existing amphibian colonies. But here we can see some toad spawn and some frog spawn. We're live. Is it getting it? So yeah. this is some toad spawn. Toad spawn is formed in strings and frog spawn's formed in clumps. So you can clearly see here it's very stringy. What was the iPhone genius? You can see when I separate it with my fingers it's all, Another all stringy. Amazing moment. When it's in the pond, there's not much difference, but when you see them side by side, you can clearly see that the toad spawn is more stringy and that the frog spawn is a thick clump. Just to reiterate what was said earlier, I don't recommend that you take away frog or toad spawn from its natural habitat, but if you do find a dried out puddle or somebody's throwing away the contents of a pond, please feel free to rescue these and put them in your own pond. Now we're in a position with the pond, but the edging is very unnatural looking. You can clearly see the plastic exposed. To combat this, simply mix mud with water and smear this around the edge, and then add some local moss. This will completely disguise the outer rim of the pond. This creates a natural looking border. And when it's completely filled, you won't be able to see the plastic. The tadpoles have now separated themselves from the frog spawn, and you can now release them into your pond. Gently. Yeah, I think that's it now. <laughs> yeah, Molly, your ice cream's about to.
now we've got a pond, we now have to create some habitats on land. You can do this by hollowing out large rocks or paving slabs within the garden. Also, you'll want to add a cover to the pond to protect the tadpoles from birds. You can feed your tadpoles boiled lettuce or fish flakes. Frog and toad tadpoles look quite similar, but the frog ones are quite speckled and the toad ones are completely jet black. Another idea for a land habitat is a hugel culture. This is a selection of rotting wood and branches piled into a triangle and then covered with soil. It creates a perfect growing medium for plants and also creates habitats for in insects, amphibians and reptiles underneath. I cover my hugel cultures with compost to create a better growing medium for plants. You need to make sure that underneath the hugel culture are many crevices where the frogs and toads and reptiles can hide underneath and prey on invertebrates. You can also use a batch of barley straw to reduce the amount of green algae inside your pond. So there you have it, a perfect environment for reptiles and amphibians. A hugel culture, some hollowed out paving slabs and a beautiful pond area. Thanks for watching and feel free to subscribe and ask questions in the comments.